I'd like to talk to you about your baby's sensory needs. This is often really poorly understood um, in our world at the moment. And in fact, parents are much more likely to be told not to let their baby get overstimulated. Um, that you need to be putting your baby in um, low stimulation environments if you want your baby to have the opportunity for healthy sleep. I would argue that this is um, very outdated um, information. I am um, just six months ago um, published a paper that goes right back into all the um, latest neuroscience um, looking at brain development um, both antenatally um, but from the first um, days and weeks post birth ongoing and it's really clear that our babies are laying down neural templates in direct response to rich and changing input across all their senses. They can see and hear and smell and taste and touch but kinesthetic stimulation, vestibular stimulation that in fact rich and changing sensory motor input optimizes developmental outcome. So we can think of this from an evolutionary point of view as our baby's hardwired need for environmental enrichment. Environmental enrichment means sensory motor stimulation, so very physical experiences, physical interactions, um, and perceptions across all the senses. And, and then environmental enrichment also refers to um, the baby's need for the building of reciprocity chains with loving adults so that to and fro of interaction sometimes the baby initiates and the loving adult responds sometimes the adult initiates and gives opportunity for the baby to respond and over the first year of life we're wanting to grow increasingly rich and complex and long reciprocity chains with the baby we have on the possumsonline.com site free videos, um, one which deals with optimising our baby's motor development, another deals with um, optimising social and emotional development. So these are all actually facets of meeting what we refer to in a shorthand phrase as baby sensory needs. The dilemma for those of us caring for a baby is that our interior environments inside our homes are really very low sensory um, environments for babies and babies dial up inside the home just because there's not enough happening to meet that biologically hardwired hunger for rich, diverse, changing sensory motor experience. I'm often saying to parents, if you think of a single tree outside, the baby may not be able to focus on the leaves, but can still see the incredibly complex interplay of light and shadow and colour of hundreds of thousands, who knows, a million leaves compared to a single wall. And that's just one single tree in the outdoor environment. It's not just the outdoor environment that, that brings babies very rich sensory experience. 
It can just be our friends or our family members home which is different to the one that the baby's familiar with. It can be taking the baby in um, to the workplace. It can be um, getting tasks done at the shops. Certainly we're wanting um, that primary carer to fill the day with um, enjoyable social activities um, outside the house, which will take the work out of having to um, meet the baby's sensory needs one-on-one -on -one in the low sensory um, interior of the home. When we step outside the house, we're able to let the world meet our baby's sensory needs. It's just so much easier. So this is why we invite parents to create days that are predominantly outside the home and that meet that primary carer's needs for enjoyment, for rich social engagement, for getting tasks done and for moving. When, when we have a baby, um, it's typically a time of life for a lot of walking. The walking's good for us. Babies love it. It's, we just want them to be able to see out and we certainly don't want to be putting covers, covers over the prams. Um, so babies love it and, and of course it's so good for us and our mood to be out walking, experiencing the um, outdoors environment. Thank you.